Bonjour, my name is Jamie Beck. I am an American living in Provence. Six years ago, I boarded a flight from Europe to New York, where I was living and working, and because of some turbulence, I thought the plane was gonna crash. And in that moment of clarity, I heard myself say, great, now I'll never know what it's like to live in Provence. And I decided if the plane landed, that's what I would do. I would move to France. So a month later, I had a visa and a suitcase packed with a one-way ticket to France. And it's been six years, and this is now my photographic studio where I live by the light of the day, and I work with whatever nature provides each morning when I wake up. In order to get my French visa, I had to have a lease on an apartment. And I didn't know how to do that. And I happened to save these Americans who had different rental vacation properties in Provence. I saved their information from a previous trip. And I sent them an email and I said, hey, can I rent one of your apartments for a year? And they said, okay. And so from these people I'd never met, who had never met me, I rented this apartment in a village I'd never been to. And I walked in here and it was love at first sight. It was as if I was always here. And this room is my living room for the first three years. I lived here and back there is a bedroom and a bathroom. And it's a very small space, but it overlooks a beautiful garden and it has a terrace. And since that time, I started working with the light and making my photographs. And I use my wall here to do most of my photographic work. And the objects that are around are the objects that I would create with, from my butterflies to little pieces of glass I found at Brocance. Um, it's all very simple daily things, things that I buy at the market to work with. And I've now expanded and I, the garden is now a place that I go to to grow subject matter for myself, which obviously is a lot of roses. And um, my, the landlords I had never met, I've since met and become very good friends with. My life has changed dramatically from the life I had in New York, the life I suddenly found myself living in Provence. It sort of sh was shocking when I first arrived, in fact. I came from a 24-hour culture where you could have anything and everything you want all the time to walking out of my front door on a Sunday with an empty market basket going to get some food. And there was nothing. Not a store was open, not a person was out. I couldn't believe it, I had no idea how to get food. And it was shocking to me that anything could be closed. And not only on Sunday, but on Monday and on Friday and on Saturday afternoon and every day for lunch for two or three hours. And it took a really long time, about a year for me to get adjusted to the, the pace of life of Provence in comparison to New York where it was just go, 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 go all the time. One of the funny things I first remember in New York, I used to go to a deli, a bodega, and I would just hold up what I was gonna purchase and I would leave the money on the counter because I didn't want to take the time to wait in line. And this is a very normal thing in New York and, and you don't wait for the change because you're, you're too busy, right? And in Provence, you don't do that. In Provence, you stand in line at the farm stand and there's five people ahead of you and you wait and it goes very slow as the guy at the checkout counter has long conversations with everyone in front of you. And at first it was maddening to me because I just wanted to you know, buy a juice or something really quickly. And as I slowly began to kind of melt away this exterior, this hard New York exterior, go, 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 work, 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 and become more Provençal myself, I realized how humane it was. When it was my turn, he would look at me in the eye and he would say bonjour, and I would say bonjour, and he would slowly try to communicate with me and teach me French and teach me how to count my change in French. And everyone was patient behind me in line. And I just really adapted and loved this about the culture. And it's, it's a striking um, comparison to the life I used to have. And when I go back to the United States now, now it's really funny to me because when I go into a shop, I'm very used to the French culture where you say bonjour to everyone every time you see them. It's a really a sign of respect. And I go into places in the United States and I'm, I'm like, no one said hi to me. <laughs> so I'm so used to now being treated so, so respectfully and, and, and giving that back to people in return. And it's a beautiful thing about the French culture I've surprised and fallen in love with since being here. In New York, 
I had a commercial photography studio and I had a lot of equipment and lighting and those sorts of things and I sold all of it when I moved to France. So I only came with the camera and the natural light. And since I didn't know anybody and I didn't have anything to do or to shoot, I didn't have any fancy jewelry or sports cars or fashion brands, all I had was the light and what I could discover. And I remember uh, my first market day, the market comes to my village every Saturday. It's been famous in France since the medieval times and it's one of France's uh, markets of exception. And uh, there was a cheesemonger there uh, who pretended to speak no English whatsoever and I was going to him every Saturday buying some eggs, buying some cheese and he one day, I never, because I never went away, he was basically he said, what are you doing here? Who are you? So I told him who I was and that I was a photographer and he said, oh, maybe you could make the photograph for my cheese cart. And I said, okay, sure. I never photographed cheese before. I thought it would be fun. And so I met, I met him at sunrise the following Saturday at the market. And we took one of every cheese, uh, it must have been 40 cheeses, and brought them in here to the studio. And I didn't really know what to do with it at that time. I was used to being a commercial fashion photographer. So I set up on my studio wall, which is the wall that's in my kitchen where I'm standing now. And I began to play and I moved this old butcher table to use it to prop the cheeses on. And that day was so, I felt like a kid full of excitement. I felt discovery. I was, I was experiencing food that I'd always known and uh, as if I'd never known it by studying it and touching it and building with it and creating with it and lo looking at the texture and looking at the color and thinking about it so differently. And my life changed in that moment, my creative life, my work, and I was so invigorated. I, then I went out to the market and said, what else could I find to shoot? What else could I make? My entertainment in France turned to be out to be the light of the day and what was coming to the market and what was growing out in the nature on my long walks, because that was all I had with me was my camera and what I could discover. And it was that discovery that changed my creative voice and the way I communicated with the world. And it wasn't about all the things that we lust for anymore. I, I was doing as a commercial photographer in New York. It was about the wonderful things that we already have, the things that are available to all of us, the food that we eat, flowers in the garden, and the gifts of the community, which France has really shown me how beautiful a community can be. I have friends who will stop by uh, with dead bugs. I have jars and jars of dead bugs here. Here, waiting for me to, to pin them. And I used them in my photographic works, which developed over time when I was shooting a still life and a wasp flew in and landed on the still life. I had a plums and apple juice that I'd had that morning for breakfast, and I was like, oh my God. It, the still life was alive and, and I just wanted, I was so fascinated by this idea, we call it a still life and in French you call it a nature mort and it's not dead at all and I really wanted to just begin working in that medium to show that these still lives are so alive. So these people, they will save their dead butterflies that they find in their house or in their garden and the bees and the cicadas and they bring them to me or they'll bring bouquets of irises from their garden or peonies from their house. Uh, for me to photograph and to create with and it's just this really beautiful like ebb and flow we have with each other around town where they inspire me and I hopefully give them something in return that, that shows that I, how much I appreciate their way of life and I hope when people look at my work they feel the beauty in the everyday that's really all I want is for people to walk out and be able to see the beauty that we all have and how lucky we are. So the first few years of my time here in France, I was, I was playing with creativity again. I was dancing. I was falling in love with photography again. I wasn't just using it as a, a means of work. And the pandemic happened. And the way I still earned a living was as a commercial photographer. So I would fly back to the United States to do commercial shoots. And I never attempted to sell my, art, my photographs as art up until that point. When the pandemic happened, all my commercial work went away overnight and I couldn't get on an airplane anymore and all the creative jobs stopped until we found out what was happening. And I didn't really know what I was going to do and a friend who was a fashion designer in New York, Vihita Dalek, she said, why don't you sell your work? And which is a terrifying thing uh, to be that vulnerable, to put yourself out there if nobody wants it or what if people you know, don't get it. Uh, and I said, well, I have to try, why not? That was moment was the last string that got severed from New York when I let go of doing commercial work and committed to becoming an artist 
and to create and hopefully make something that other people can value and want to own a piece of as well. From that moment, my life as an artist in France began and it's been a wonderful evolution. And now I have these great uh, collaborations I've been doing with French brands, such as this hand fan brand in Paris, Delvirbois, and they put one of my floral still lives on one of their fans. And we did this in four colorways, but this is the one that the color was inspired by my studio. So now I sell my prints globally around the world and we also use the photographs to make things like paperweights and i come out with a set of stationery every year it's they're all printed in france family-owned letter letterpress in aix-en-provence now i have this whole new life that i never anticipated all from this one moment of clarity just wanting to be here before i die just wanting to know what this experience would be like i then actually ended up with a whole new life I love fashion. I think of fashion as my costumes because fashion is its just storytelling. It's another version of storytelling, right? So I'm always, uh, when I'm getting dressed, I'm always thinking about what is the story that I want to tell or if I'm going to make a photograph, if I'm going to do a self-portrait, which is a part of my work. It's what is, what is the story and how do I express that through fashion? So I have a lot of fashion and I love it. Um, and I have some very interesting pieces. I have one of my favorite French designers is Thierry Colson, who is in Paris and he does beautiful embroidery. And I have lots of romantic things and some vintage things, but this is really interesting. I shot a still life of roses from a vineyard in saint remy de provence called Domaine Milan. And this New York fashion designer, Christine Alclay, put it on, she made it into a repeat and put it on a silk dress, which is just absolutely to die for. And through here is my former bedroom and the terrace that overlooks the garden. And I would like to show you my garden now. When I moved into the apartment, I opened up the wooden drawer of the butcher table in the kitchen and there was a key to the garden, which is where I am now. And I came down to this place and it was a bit different. There were some other trees and a different setup and it was a bit overgrown and wild. And I slowly started to kind of manicure it a little bit, but I leave it a little bit wild too. The lavender is just going crazy and I love it. But I just kind of slowly took it over and as my passion for flowers and the seasons began to unfold, I wanted to start growing more of the own, my own subject matter and to get even closer of a knowledge to the nature that I was working with in my work. So I began to plant and now I have five climbing roses over here and I have seven other varieties in the garden. The Charles de Gaulle, the purple ones, are the best perfume. I love when they, when they come. And then I have some Cosmos. This woman from Paris, actually, she was so sweet. She mailed me seeds from the Tuileries. These aren't them, but it was really sweet. So now I grow Cosmos in the summer, and that will go through September. Really lovely. It's kind of uh, our outdoor living space now. We have dinner at this table and we have friends over and we grill and it's just really light and simple. Most mornings I come down and I'll see what's blooming, I'll see what inspires me. Sometimes there's a snail crawling up the garden wall and I'll borrow him for a still life and I'll cut some of the roses or the, some of the hydrangeas and I'll bring it up into my studio and I'll make something with that. But it's sort of my like laboratory towards nature. So there's the lessons that are out in the Provencal landscape and then there's sort of my up close study of it here and, and, and what does it really actually mean to grow things and to care for things and to watch them change from buds to full flowers and sometimes I don't cut them, I let them mature until all the petals fall because I like to see that cycle because it represents the cycles of our lives. So this is sort of my laboratory. I study the beautiful nature. So now I've been in Provence long enough, people know my work well enough that they will send me messages and say, oh I heard you liked roses, come see my garden. And I got just such a message from Chateau de Mille, which is an um, organic winery right outside of the village. And she did not tell me that she has an incredible rose garden. When I first arrived, I thought, you know, it'd be like mine where there's a few 
pretty little flowers. Oh, but she's just turned this whole magical wonderland of rows and rows of garden roses. And she was trying to talk to me and I was kind of losing my mind. And I was like, we're gonna have to have a break for a minute. I need to go out and I need to look at all of this and understand it. And it was just like, it was like fireworks for my brain and and all the possibilities and the colors and everything. So now she's a wonderful friend ever since then because we bonded over roses and uh, she lets me come by every now and then to cut some for my work, which is a really another lovely uh, gesture of the local community. My work in Provence is about the seasons. I live by the light of the day and by the time of the year. And it first began with going out into the countryside and foraging and discovering nature. And along the way, I've made friends with the local community. And this is one example of that. We are in my friend Constance Rose Garden, who is the owner of Chateau de Mille Winery. And she has this incredible rose garden and you see the lavender and there's so many different varieties. And I come here and I find inspiration because they turned the winery into an organic winery three years ago. So you always discover new butterflies and new species going around. So I come and I study the nature and I become inspired. And then I, I was talking about how wonderful the community is. And so Constance lets me take some of the roses and the flowers that I like home to my studio to create with. And uh, so I'll just wait and I'll see until something sparks my imagination or inspires me and it changes every day and with what is blooming because in Provence we will have roses all year round actually and it's you know you respond to the color and I just wait for that thing that delights me and then that's where I go and then my day will begin there or maybe I see a specific butterfly I'd never seen before or behave in a way I'd never experienced and that will lead me down my path for the day and so this is just sort of um, one of the many gifts of Provence is you have all of these secret little gardens tucked away and you have these really wonderful people who are caretakers of the land and they do a beautiful job and the colors are endlessly rope like always folding over over themselves throughout all of the seasons here so it's just an endless bounty of inspiration and since we are here I thought I would finish the day by cutting a few roses to take back to the studio to make another piece of art which I hope you will enjoy with me thank you for coming and experience my Provence